Retool is a faster way to build business software. We, we started with sort of internal tools, but you can now build sort of customer facing software as well in Retool across web applications, mobile applications, backend sort of logic, cron jobs, API endpoints. And we also have a data storage layer or we can connect to any API or database internally. Um, and so companies are using Retool to build a lot of their uh, sort of core operational software. You can run Retool either in the cloud or on premise. A lot of our larger customers run Retool you know, in their own VPC. So everything is uh, within their network. And with Retool AI, we've launched a whole host of features throughout the product. The vectors uh, piece is, is only one piece. And I'm gonna kind of walk you through some, you know, some additional things that we've introduced to the product as well. Um, our goal here was really twofold. We wanted to be the best place to actually build apps with AI. So if you want an app built, you should be able to use AI to get that done. But we also wanted you to be able to incorporate AI maybe into your existing apps. So it's less about building an app and it's more about actually building a business process or you know, let's say you're an insurance company, maybe matching like a claim with a policy. You wanna use AI to sort of power that inside of Retool. So starting in the first bucket, we introduced it, it sort of introduced some code authoring tools. Um, so you can write now JavaScript, Python code, GraphQL queries, SQL queries uh, with natural language, and you can accept or reject sort of the proposed query. You can then you know, modify it if it's not 100% correct. And we've seen the acceptance rates here now sort of above 50%, which we're really happy with, and that's inching up every month um, as we improve the prompt and sort of the context that we give the LLM. And so now you know users that you know may not be experts in JavaScript or GraphQL can actually get to their applications much faster by relying on, on AI. And furthermore, you know, Retool can sort of write code that just works right in, in a Retool app because it's aware of all the UI components it has to reference. It's aware of your data schema. If you just sort of type this into ChatGPT, it would be a much more generic function that wouldn't necessarily just sort of work inside of Retool. We've also introduced debugging tools. And so now Retool will sort of catch you as you maybe make mistakes in your JavaScript code um, so that you can get to your, your final application faster. We've also introduced AI on the UI generation side of things. So here, um, when a user drags in a table now, we have this uh, indicator called quick actions or predictive actions, where you know, we know based on all of our data that the most common thing next to a table might be a form that is connected to the table selected row. Um, and so we'll sort of default, uh, give you suggestions for things like that, along with a few others that might be the most common next action after, after dragging in a table component. And this is meant to get builders sort of more in a state of flow so you can build your application and, and specifically your user interface much faster. We're also experimenting with additional forms of UI generation. So on the left-hand side, you'll see I'm writing a comment uh, inside of Retool and it's generating the code live and I can actually see the UI and play with the calculator. On the right-hand side, I right-clicked on the canvas. I gave it a prompt and it actually gave me three different options. Um, if you're familiar with the mid-journey UI where you sort of give a prompt, it shows you like several different images. You can drill down on one and see more similar images. We sort of took inspiration from that and are trying to create sort of a very, um, take advantage of the fast feedback loops in Retool where you can write language, see it actually in front of you. It actually works. It's connected to your APIs and databases and then maybe tweak the last you know, 20 or 30% that the LLM didn't catch. So we're, we're experimenting with these. Neither of these are actually released yet, but we're excited about um, bringing something to market soon uh, that will allow you to sort of build more fully fledged applications using natural language. The second bucket um, is really about how to integrate AI into your business. So it's less about building apps fast and it's more about sort of actually using AI to power your own bespoke processes. Um, and so we've introduced this concept of AI actions inside of Retool, where you can do everything from you know, text-based actions like generation, summarization, classification, and extraction, to document analysis, to image generation, to audio transcription. Um, and this is powered by the LLM of your choice. So if you pick an LLM that's you know, image generation, we'll give you all the image actions. If you pick one that's more text-based, we'll give you all the text actions. And you can just plug in your own credentials for that large language model. And we support you know, OpenAI, Azure OpenAI, Anthropic Cohere, and we're adding um, sort of the ability to support any on-premise sort of open source model. So if you wanna run you know, Llama 2 or Mosaic inside of your VPC, soon you'll be able to sort of connect to that with just you know, entering a few credentials and, and you'll get all these AI actions out of the box. Um, we've seen really interesting use cases with AI actions. So here, you're actually seeing someone build an app that extracts images uh, or tags from an image and then allows you to sort of put, put those tags back into your product catalog. Here you're seeing somebody build an app that allows you to take a bunch of PDFs of like field reports of, of facilities, summarize them and categorize them as excellent, medium or critical condition. Here you're seeing a use case where somebody has a you know, file picker component where they upload a PDF, they drag in our chat component, which we've also released, and, and they actually build a chat app on top of a document. Um, and so what, what is really sort of interesting here is, you know, Retool already has all these primitives to build UIs, to build workflows. Now you can just sort of inject AI into all of these apps um, really easily. Uh, and, and, and we've seen our customers build sort of a really wide range of use cases. Um, in, in terms of the, the vector side of things, I sort of talked about um, sort of the value of vectors. In terms of actually using it in the product, it's really easy now. You just go to Retool Vectors under the Resources tab. You create a vector from you know, a URL, a document, or a website, um, or, or, or actually a SaaS tool like Slack or Confluence. 
um, you just click, you know, retool AI, generate text, sort of give your prompt, which will probably come from like a UI component or, or maybe an input to a workflow. And then you just check this box that says, you know, you re use retool vectors to provide more context to your query and select all the vector namespaces that you want, select the model that powers that query, and you'll get a very relevant answer, um, you know, based on, based on your data. And I actually wanted to show, you know, a quick example of sort of how vectors um, can really help give a relevant answer. Um, so in this case, on the left-hand side, you're seeing um, an answer with retool vectors, and on the right-hand side, you're seeing an answer without retool vectors. So on the right-hand side, um, it's sort of very generic. It's not actually that specific to retool. It knows what an OAuth token is. It knows what an API resource is and retool, but it doesn't actually um, sort of give me any sort of particularly helpful information. You notice on the left-hand side, it's actually referencing like this very custom sort of variable that we use in, in the retool API flow, and it's much more specific to retool. Um, and the only difference between these two is that the query, you know, has this checkbox down here. And here we're actually giving it all of our GitHub docs and all of our sort of public docs. Um, and then here we're, we're actually not providing that context. And that's the only difference between these two queries. And so, you know, vectors can sort of have a much more you know, high quality answer. And it's really what took our responses on the support side from, you know, that one or 2% all the way up to that 25% once we were able to sort of vectorize all the way.